in the video number 16, I talked about the change of the chord bar configuration ordering to what I called the 1243 RD chord button layout. Well, I've improved on that layout yet again, but this time the change is not as drastic as previously. So as regards the general layout of the chord buttons, we still preserve the 1243 RD layout, where we have the block of 12 here, which are the 12 major, minor, 6th and 7th buttons, and then we have the four control buttons here, which are the four positive augmented third buttons, and then we have the ring finger holder slot here, and then we have the dampener button there, and then we have the three diminished thirds there. So that hasn't changed at all in this new configuration. What I have done is that I have changed the internal layout of the buttons within each block. So to start off with, in the previous version, I had this row here of buttons forming the top row of the block of 12 with the B major, D major, F major, and A flat major. So in this new version, I've shifted that row down by one position so that instead of that row, we now have a new row of four buttons there for the buttons of F sharp major, A major, C major, and E flat major. So those now form the top row of the block of 12, and together combined, they make up the word F-A-C-E, face. So that is the name of this new layout. So it's called the face 1243RD chord button layout. As regards the group of four control buttons here, I have simply rotated them round anti-clockwise by 90 degrees. So instead of having the button once at this position here, followed by two and three and four, we have the one starting at this position here, and then we have two, three and four. So that's more in keeping with the position of the one o'clock on the clock face, where it's located at the top right hand corner of the clock. As regards this bottom row of diminished thirds buttons here, I've simply just changed them now so that they are in keeping with the major, minor, seventh and sixth buttons in the same row. So for example, for this chord button here, this place and notes F sharp, a, C, and E flat, and this diminished third button here, place the notes of the chord that contain the notes B, D, F, and A flat, and this diminished third here, plays the chord that contains the notes of E, G, B flat, and C sharp. The benefit of having this new layout is that it allows us to play the chord of C major very easily as a starting position. So what exactly is a starting position? Well, the chord button starting position is the one that the left hand this one assumes when in the middle of playing the chord buttons we suddenly lose track of all our orientation and we don't know where the chord buttons are and where the notes are so in order to find our orientation again we simply assume the starting position so that we can find all the correct chord buttons from that starting position so how do we get to that starting position well i'll show you now in four easy steps so step one we place the ring finger in the ring finger holder and then step two we pinch the thumb and the middle finger together like that, and then when they meet, that touches the side of the ring finger like that. And then step three, where the thumb and the middle finger meet, then we place the index finger at the side like that. And then step four, we rotate the left hand round so that the index finger touches the first button to the right of the ring finger like that. So that button, it's the control button number four. So that is our starting position. So if at any stage we're lost among the chord buttons and don't know where the buttons are because we lose our orientation, we just assume that start position and then we have found the control button number four. So that is known as the control button number four start position. So if we shift the middle finger just up one button to the one directly above the control four button, then we arrive at the control one button, this one here. And then if we shift the thumb to the button directly underneath the control four button, this one here, then that is the button for A flat major. So when those three buttons are pressed together, that allows us to strum or to sound the chord of A flat major. So that's so these three buttons here are known as the A flat major start position. So that is A flat major. So from this a flat major start position, we can very easily find two other start positions. So the next one is the C minor start position. And to get to that position, all we need to do is just to shift the thumb just up one to this button here, to this button of E flat major. So when these three buttons are now pressed, the control buttons, the same as before, and the E flat major button, that gives us the chord of C minor. So that is the C minor start position. So if we move the thumb just along one on the same row to the chord button of C major, keeping the same control buttons, 
when we press three th these three buttons, then it gives us the chord of C major. So that is known as the C major start position. So if at any stage we lose our orientation amongst the chord buttons and don't know where we are and can't find the chord buttons, we just assume the start position on the control button number four. And then from that, we find the C major start position like that. And then we know that's the chord of C major. And then we're back. And then from that position of C major, we can very easily find all the other chords. I touched upon the benefit of having the 1243 RD chord button layout in video number 16 and how using this layout it allows us to change chords very quickly and very easily through the use of the 12 major, minor, 7th and 6th buttons here and the 4 control buttons. As regards the usage of these 4 control buttons then in order to help us easily to memorize how to use them I'd like to introduce 5 different mnemonics. So the first mnemonic it's scuba dom subdominant. So scuba as in scuba diving, dom subdominant. So the first mnemonic, it's scuba clockwise dom, subdominant. What that means is that when we're playing a chord with two buttons being pressed in the control buttons, in order to play the subdominant chord, then we simply rotate the control buttons round by 90 degrees clockwise. 90 degrees scuba clockwise dom, dominant. So for example, if we're playing the chord of C major, then we press the C major button here, and we press these two control buttons and that's C major. To play the F major chord, then we shift the C major to F major, and then we rotate the two control buttons round by a scuba clockwise dom, subdominant, 90 degrees, to these two buttons there, and that gives us F major. And similarly, to change from F major to B flat major, the subdominant, then we change the major minor button from F major to B flat major, this one here, and then, as regards these two control buttons here, then we rotate them round 90 degrees, scuba clockwise dom, subdominant clockwise to these two buttons here. And that is B flat major. And the next mnemonic, it's dominante clockwise dominant, which means that if we wish to do the reverse, let's say we wish to change from the B flat major to the dominant F major, then we simply do the opposite. So as regards the B major button here, to change, we, we change that from B major to F major, and as regards these two control buttons here, we rotate them round, dominant anti-clockwise, anti-clockwise by 90 degrees from these two buttons to these two buttons. So that is F major, and similarly from F major to the dominant C major, we change from the F major button to the C major button, and as regards these two control buttons here, we rotate them round dominant anti-clockwise, anti-clockwise by 90 degrees to these two here. And that is the chord of C major. And the third mnemonic, it's 70 clockwise, seventh, which means that if we wish to play the seventh chord of a major chord, then we simply play the one control button that is the most 70 clockwise or anti-clockwise of the two, which is this one here, of these two here. So this is C major. And this is the C major 7th. And the third mnemonic, it's clockwise 6th, which conversely to the previous mnemonic, if we wish to play the major 6th chord of a major chord, then we simply press the most clockwise button of the two control buttons in order to sound the 6th chord. So for the C major 6th, we play these two buttons here. So that's the C major 6th. And lastly, the fifth mnemonic is minor on row. So with minor, the first three letters being M-I-N, and the acronym O-R, represented by on row. So what that means is that if we wish to play the minor chord of a major chord, then what we need to do is that we just play the same two control buttons for the S major chord, but we just shift the major minor button just up one to the same one on the same row in order to play its minor chord. So for example, here we have the C major button, and then we have these two bus control buttons here as the two control buttons from C major. And in order to play the C minor chord, we simply shift it up one on the same row to the next button up, which is the E flat major button, and that is the C minor chord. Similarly, for example, these three buttons here play the F major chord, 
And to play the F minor chord, we simply shift to the same row, the next button on the same row, to play the F minor, whilst playing the same two control buttons here. So that is the F minor. So that is the same for all 12 major minor buttons. So having learnt those five different mnemonics, then they will allow us to use four of those harmonies from those mnemonics in order to play the next exercise in which we learn about the basic playing style of the all keys auto harp style of playing. So as regards those harmonies, they are the subdominant, the dominant, the seventh and the minor. So in order to learn this basic style, we just start off with a very basic tune which is this. So in that tune, those were just nine very simple notes alternating between the middle C and the D. And once we've mastered those nine notes, and after that we add the harmonies. And the harmonies are C major as the tonic, followed by G major as the dominant, followed by F major as the subdominant, followed by G major seventh as the dominant seventh. And then we go back to, to the tonic again, but this time we play the, the minor tonic, which is C minor and then we play the dominant, which is G major, and then we play the minor subdominant, which is F minor, and then we play the dominant seventh, which is G major seventh, and then we end on the tonic major again, the C major. So these are the chords. The first one is C major, which are these two buttons here, the controls buttons one and four, and this button here, which is top row, and three along, this one here. So that's C major and the next chord after that is G major and if you remember because the G major is the dominant to get to the dominant we need to follow the mnemonic which is dominante clockwise dominant so as regards the two control buttons here then we need to rotate them round anti-clockwise like, th like that and so those are the two control buttons for G major and as regards the major minor buttons here then for the G major we need to go down the column to the bottom row and then we need to go up one to this position here. So as regards finding our way around these major minor control buttons here, then we need to follow the path in straight lines so that at all times we keep track of which row and which column we're in, so that it's best to avoid moving around in diagonals because if we do that then we lose track of the row and the column very easily. So this is the chord of G major. And then to get back from G major to the C major, then similarly, there's a change of harmony from the G major to the C, which is the G to the subdominant. Then we follow the mnemonic, scuba dominant, subdominant, clockwise. So that is clockwise for the subdominant. So it's these two control buttons here, and then as regards the C major button, it's one along, and then to the very top row there. So that's C major. And then the next chord after that is F major. So to get from the G major to the F major, we need to get back to the C major again, and then C major to F major. So we follow the mnemonics again, but this time we follow the mnemonic for the subdominant, which is scuba, clockwise, subdominant. So we change the two control buttons from these two to these two, and then once we're back at the, the C, then we know the F is just the next one up, which is this one here. So to change from the C to the F major chord, then we need to go, the F is the subdominant, so once again that is scuba, clockwise, dominant, subdominant, so that is clockwise, so clockwise, as regards these two buttons, they need to rotate clockwise to these two buttons here, and then that's F major. And then from F major, we need to change to the dominant seventh, which is this G major seventh, so for that, once again we need to go back to the C major chord, and then we need to find the chord of G major, which are these two here, and this button here, for the G major, and then this time around we need to remember the mnemonic 70 clockwise 7th, which means that of the two control buttons here, the most anti-clockwise is a 7th, which is this one here. So this is the G major 7th chord. 
after that we need to play the C minor chord and so we go back to the C major which is these three buttons here if we're not sure then we simply assume the control button for start position and then we find the A flat major start position and we go to the C minor start position and then we go to the C major start position so these are the three buttons for the C major and then to go to the C minor we remember the mnemonic minor on row so we move to the next button on the same row and this is the C minor chord and then after that we play the dominant which is the G major so for the dominant we follow the mnemonic dominant anti-clockwise anti-clockwise for the dominant so it's these two buttons here in the co two control buttons and this is the chord of G major the dominant and then after that we need to go to the subdominant so the subdominant of C minor is F minor so we go back to the C minor start position and then for the subdominant it's scuba dominant subdominant clockwise so we rotate these two buttons round clockwise 90 degrees to these two buttons and this next button down here which is on the same row as the F major so this is the, the F minor button here which is on the same row as the F major which is actually the same button as the as the A flat major button so this is the chord of F minor and after that we play the dominant 7th chord again so which is the G, G major 7th so this is the G major 7th chord again so for that I need to get back to the C major start position and then I find the G major which is the dominant which are these three buttons here and then I remember the mnemonic 7 and C clockwise 7th so it's just this one button here in the control buttons and this button here for the G major so this is a G major 7th and then the final harmony is the back to C major and so that is very easy because we just assume the C major start position again which is this so what we do now is that we combine that simple tune or melody of nine notes alternating between middle C and D we pluck it with the thumb and then we strum with the index finger so at this basic style of playing, the ruler said if we pluck with a thumb, which we would do if we are playing a string, that is one of the bottom 24 strings, then we strum with the index finger. However, if we pluck with a middle finger, which we would do if we are plucking a string in the top 12 or any below, then if we wish to strum chords that are above the, the plucked string, then we strum with the ring finger. Otherwise, if it's below the plucked string, then we strum with the index finger. So for example, let's say I pluck the middle C with the thumb, like that. Then, to strum the chord, I strum with the index finger. So for example, if I pluck the middle C, so bearing in mind the rules that we learned in the beginner lessons, that for example, that we shouldn't cross a reverberating pluck string with a strum, in order to avoid that metallic clipping sound. But if we're plucking with the middle finger, for example, the C1 octave above middle C, like that, then if we wish to strum a chord above that note then we strum with the ring finger like that however if we wish to strum a chord below that note then we strum with the index finger like that and for now at this basic level of playing we only strum in an upward direction so what we'll do now is that we'll combine that simple tune of those nine notes alternating between middle C and D with those harmonies that we learnt just now. So the first note is middle C and then we strum the chord of C major and then the next note it's D and with that we strum the chord of G major, the dominant and then to the subdominant of C major which is F major and then to the dominant 7th which is G major 7th and now to the minor which is C minor and now to the dominant which is G major and now to the subdominant which is F minor and now to the dominant 7th which is G major 7th and now back to the tonic major, which is C major. So at this basic level of playing, 
in this basic style of playing. What I'm not doing is playing a chord and strumming the same chord at the same time as playing the melody, like I showed in the, a previous lesson, like this. Instead, what I'm doing is that I'm plucking the melodic notes separately, and then I'm strumming the chord with the index finger afterwards. So the aim is to achieve a beautifully toned melodic line with a gently backing strumming chord, providing the harmonies in the background. So once again, I'll do that exercise, but this time I'll do it completely without any commentary. <laughs> And notice as well how I was using the dampener button then between the harmonies just to provide more delineation between the harmonies. So here we have the All Keys Auto Harp Chord Bar Felt Pattern Configuration, version number 3, dated the 22nd of July 2017. As shown in the slide, it's the new arrangement, the very latest update, with the chord bars arranged in the FACE 1243RD configuration, with the four buttons of the major chords of F-sharp, A major, C, and E-flat major forming the top leftmost buttons of the chord buttons. So if you are doing the conversion, you might wish to pause the video to make notes as regards the configuration. Alternatively, you might wish to do a screen print of this configuration. So that is all for this video. Just a basic introduction into the mnemonics that will help us to memorize more easily how to find our way around the control buttons here and the different major minor buttons and changing harmonies and as well as that how to play the basic style. So we can use that exercise in order to develop greater tonality and expressivity in our melodic playing. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you do have any comments, suggestions or feedback, then do leave them down below. Otherwise, in the meantime, until next time, have a nice day.